Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Saman. Um, in this session, we're going to be going specifically over loops in Salesforce, what their capabilities are, and why we should use them as developers. I do want to do a quick shout out on the Apex developer guide within the Salesforce developer documentation set. Um, the documentation they have is really, really comprehensive, and it is the way that I do refreshers for myself um, on a lot of different Apex concepts. So please check it out. I will be trying my best to provide the link to the specific documentation on the comment section of every video. So please do take a look in there. They do go over some of the material a little bit more in depth than I, I do, but I really do try to cover um, the gist of what they talk about in these. But let's go over the different types. Okay, so the first one is a really generic for loop. Um, like it says, Apex supports three different variations of the for loop. The traditional for loop, one that's over a list or a set, which we haven't learned about yet, and then one that's over a SQL uh, query. So the very first one, the traditional for loop, the way it works is we have a initiation statement, we have an exit condition to get out of that loop, and then we have an increment statement. And for all of these, we are going to be executing this block of code. So what does that look like for us here? Well, it looks a little bit similar to what we talked about in if statements. You can think about it as for conditions, do the actions. And if this condition was true five times, then this action would get executed five different times. So looking back at the documentation, we need the initiation, we need the exit condition, and we need the increment statement. So this is kind of a quirky feature of for loops, but we can declare a variable inside the parentheses. So I can make a, uh, an integer variable called i and set that to zero and then put my semicolon. And what I want to do is as long as i is less than five, another semicolon, add one to i. So we haven't talked about this syntax yet. What this does is it basically takes the value of that variable and adds one to it. So if I had my variable here called zero, or not called zero, but called x set to zero, and I did a x plus plus, and I did system.debug x. So I would not expect this to print out zero. I would instead actually expect it to print out one because this adds one to whatever the previous value was. Um, so if I set x equal to one here, I would now expect it to say two. Let's see if that's the case. Cool. Yeah, so x is equal to 2. All right, now that we got that out of the way, what this is doing, just to recap, we have an integer called i set to 0. As long as i is less than 5, add 1 to i and then do this action. So I can have here system debug, I am going to execute 5 times. And the expectation is that I would see this line of code, even though I've only written it one time. I would see it five different times on my debug log. So let's see if I see that. There she is, one, two, three, four, five. So it, one other cool thing that you can do is actually reference these variables within your for loop. So just to demonstrate that, I am executing, actually, this is round number. And the same way that we concatenated string literals to variables in the last section, we can do that here. So now this should say this is round number zero, then round number one, two, three, and four. Right on. Okay, cool. So that takes care of that for loop. The next one we can talk about is the while loop. So a while loop is a little bit simpler. You can see that a, there is a very simple condition to check for, and there's no mathematical operations happening inside. So what we could do instead is create the integer ourselves outside of the loop and say while x is less than 5, do a system debug saying I'm less than 5. But now we are responsible for updating the value inside the scope of that while loop. Because if we didn't, which I did it the right way here, I should see that accurately reflect in our debugs. Cool. But man, what would happen if I didn't ever write line number nine? Well, integer x is zero, and while it's less than five, print this line, but there's nothing ever updating x. So it's always gonna be less than five. So let's see how Salesforce handles that. Waiting, 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 waiting. All right, so let me spoil it for you. What we did is, and I was expecting Salesforce to throw out a error saying um, the request has been timed out, 
I'm not sure why it didn't, but if you've ever heard of the concept of an infinite loop, this was it. An infinite loop means that, there it is, apex CPU time limit reached. So an infinite loop means is that it got stuck in your for loop, meaning that it never found a way to exit, which means this just keeps running and running and running and running and running and running until you've maxed out your system resources, your server shuts down, whatever. Um, it'll never stop. And that is why while loops can be particularly a little bit dangerous. Of course, I could still create an infinite loop accidentally here if I had set something like this. This would also give me an infinite loop. Running and running and running, spoiler alert, I'll eventually get the same error. So that's our while loop. And the last one we have is a dual while loop. So Salesforce explains the dual while loop as a loop where you do one thing once guaranteed, and then if your condition is true, you keep doing the other thing that you want to be doing. So in Apex, the dual while loop, we write the keyword do, add the uh, squiggly braces to define the scope, and then have our while condition. So the difference between this piece of code and this one is very slight. And that is that regardless of whether or not this condition is true, this do action will get executed at least one time. And after it executes that very first time, it evaluates this condition. If that condition is true, then it runs lines 12 through 14 again. Otherwise, if it's false, it won't, but it already did run it once and that's okay. Whereas in here, it's not guaranteed to run once at all, depending on my condition. Of course, based off this condition, it will. Um, but if I had done something similar to that, it would have never have run. So example, taking this same debug, do um, I'm less than five while x. We'll make another variable. Okay, so what we have here is my integer being set to five. And if that integer is greater than eight, I want to print out I'm greater than eight. The only problem is this is a do while loop. So it's definitely going to print out I'm greater than eight before it gets a chance to evaluate this while loop. So even though this condition isn't true, it's still going to print out the system debug, but at least it'll only print it out once. So you're telling me I have to name my variables. Cool, so it said I'm greater than eight just one time. And yeah, that's really it with loops. That's what they're all about. They're, those are the three main types. And like I said, once we start learning about lists and sets and maps, we'll go over the different variations of specifically the for loop that you have access to. So I'll see you in the next videos where we talk about methods.